Hi, I'm Marty Peters, uh, aka DJ Wiz. I am a music producer, composer, recording engineer, and mastering engineer, uh, sound editor, and um, I work out of Ozone Music and Sound in Royal Oak, which is uh, basically Detroit, and um, I'm also a part owner of the studio. When I was a kid, um, had family members who were guitar players, singers, uh, grew up with music in the home. Um, had an uncle who played guitar and toured with Waylon Jennings for a while. And uh, it was a lot of country music um, that I was around when I was younger. But as I grew a little older and started listening to my own uh, music and tuning through the radio dial, I stumbled across uh, a guy named uh, The Wizard, who did mix shows late night on WJLB, which is Detroit hip hop and R&B station. Um, the Wizard, or AKA Jeff Mills. That guy, uh, to me, w was one of the greatest mix DJs I ever, you know, uh, as I grew later in life to, to, to understand what it was all about. It's one of my favorites. Um, he was inspiring to me. He played all different kinds of music and um, I was introduced to uh, the earliest forms of hip hop music uh, from his shows and I immediately fell in love and to this day hip hop is my all time favorite uh, genre of music. And that's what got me started. In high school, I was fortunate enough to get a job working weekends at a local radio station. Um, when I first started, I was just a board op, pushing buttons and playing commercials during uh, local sports broadcasts. Um, but I quickly moved my way up and, and garnered some overnight weekend positions where I actually had a full um, you know, uh, overnight show where I ran some syndicated programs and then also did my own uh, music programming and uh, learned a ton at that point. Um, it was during that time that I was able to actually have access to the, uh, the radio station's production studio and um, started working on my own kind of music production uh, from the hip hop uh, perspective. And that was with turntables and some reel to reel tapes and being able to make samples and put the beats together. And uh, some friends of mine in high school started rapping, put that stuff together and basically um, that's kind of where it all started for me. I uh, graduated high school and not too long after that was able to save up enough money to get my own um, sampler keyboard and at the time that was the Ensonic ASR10. Now a lot of people, um, you know, it's, it's techy geeky stuff but there's iconic instruments throughout history in hip hop music especially that sort of informed the way that music sounded at the time. And during the 90s, the ASR-10 was all over hit records. Um, to this day, uh, Timberland, Kanye West, uh, many other producers like that, the Alchemists, still use that machine to produce the, the, the music that they're making hit records with to this day. Um, but I got started with that, um, and it was, you know, again, from the, from the hip hop perspective where you're building songs off of sampling other music and then uh, producing from there. The inspiration of taking bits and pieces of other things and then creating something completely new that no one's ever heard or thought of out of that. Um, that's where it started for me and that's what, that's what inspires me to this day is um, the idea that even within certain genres that are defined by very specific sound elements or techniques, you can take um, some really uh, kind of out there creative material and interject that into those genres to still make your stuff sound unique within the genre and that's that's an inspiring thing to be able to take something and create something that maybe no one's ever thought of or no one's ever heard before that's what keeps me motivated it goes way back before uh, before I met her I, I met her father we grew up next door to each other um, my younger brother and her dad were pretty good buddies and we all hung out and played football and all that kind of thing growing up as kids and uh, he was kind of you know kind of a family member or was always over at the house 
Um, and throughout the years, we all sort of remained in touch or would run into each other here and there at local things. And um, as time went on, uh, uh, her dad and her mom, I think, really started to understand that she was writing songs and doing things that um, maybe uh, needed some more production help and stuff and could be turned into something that uh, people want to listen to. And so um, I think when Liv was uh, 14, her, her mom reached out to me uh, knowing that, you know, th I'm in the business and uh, work with other artists and things. And we started talking about it and, uh, and they sent me some material. And when they sent me the stuff she was doing or some of the rough ideas, um, I immediately could tell that there's there's some magic in this. Um, Liv is she's writing lyrical content that's that's far more mature than her age. She's smart, you know, and 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 deep. Um, and her melodic abilities uh, kind of blew me away. Um, being able to write some some strong lyrics is you know, is a, is, a, is a talent in and of itself. Then being able to kind of form a melody that's gonna catch people's ears and keep people listening to what you're saying is, I mean, one in a million. It's really tough to do that. And um, Liv has both of those abilities. And that's, that's what jumped out to me first, was her songwriting um, was really solid at, at 14. Um, that's what made me want to work with her. I knew that there was, there was, something there that can be taken to that next level. I'd say what we do together, um, if you have to categorize it and put it in a genre, um, which I hate, there's so many genres, subgenres, whatever, everybody tries to pigeonhole an artist into being just one little thing, um, which I think is a, a you know, it's, it doesn't do the artist justice because I think creative people want to be able to express themselves in many ways and want to be able to explore and experiment. And uh, being pigeonholed into a genre doesn't always let you do that. But if I had to call it something, I guess what we do um, would fall into uh, alternative pop. And I would say that it leans singer songwriter alternative pop. So. We do a combination of, of this really deep songwriting with very modern, um, even electronic uh, production techniques and uh, alternative pop uh, characteristics. So I guess that's what I call it, uh, singer-songwriter alternative pop. Um, there's always hip-hop influences, there's always some R&B and soul influences, um, but I think that's where you would uh, where you'd categorize it, at least in the marketplace today.